in the name of God who creates, God who redeems, God who sustains. Amen. In Gadsden, Alabama, where I grew up, my family owned a restaurant, Doc's Cafe, a down-to-earth place where you could get a good hot meal, fast, friendly service for a fair price. Lunchtime was standing room only. Folks willing to wait as they anticipated Doc's famous beef stew with a side order of coleslaw and piping hot, crusty corn sticks slathered in butter. The cafe was always packed, every seat taken. That is, every seat on the white only side of the cafe. Beyond the door, through a separate outside entrance, there were plenty of seats on the colored side. <clears throat> Although I was only a child, it did not make sense to me. One side so full, the other so empty. When I asked why, the answer sounded simple. That is just the way things are. It would be years before I understood that the wall and separate entrance were silent barriers to the truth that when people break bread together, community is created. Jesus' dinner host is keenly aware of this truth. The carefully chosen guest list includes like-minded leaders, lawyers, temple authorities. They have been in the Sabbath supper club for years. They decide to make the evening a little more interesting they will invite the talk of the town, Jesus. They want to figure him out, see where he fits in, if he fits in. In their world, money is the second most important value. The dominant value is status. Status based on wealth, ancestry, prestige, and power. Nothing is done, including dining. Nothing is done without taking status into account. Jesus' status? Well, they are not sure. They heard he has been downright disrespectful of the Sabbath. Even today, on his way to the dinner party, Jesus stopped dead in his track and healed a man of dropsy on the Sabbath. So the members of the Sabbath supper club watched Jesus closely. Instead of making polite pre-dinner conversation, Jesus watches them closely. Table seating is serious business. The higher the status, the closer to the places of honor. That is just the way things are. Jesus watches all the shuffling as the guests do the who sits higher than whom dance. Jesus says, hey, I 
have an idea. Did not sit in the highest, most prominent place of honor. Someone with more status than you may walk through the door. And your host may say, you are in the wrong seat. Red-faced and humiliated, you will have to move. Instead, go back to the end of the table, way down there at the end. Your host may come down there and in front of everyone say, Friend, come on, move up to a higher place. Those who exalt themselves will be humbled. Those who humble themselves will be exalted. Well, the guests think this is a novel, potentially very dramatic way of getting a higher seat at the table. No, you go first. Oh, no, no, after you. Oh, no, I insist, you first. They like that idea. However, next, Jesus has an idea that they think is a terrible one. Jesus says, when you have a dinner party, do not invite your friends, those who can repay you or do favors for you. Instead, ask the people who are never invited out, only left out. Jesus looks around the lavish banquet hall and declares, It does not make sense. One side so full, the other so empty. Beyond the wall, through an outside entrance, stand the empty-handed and the hungry. Jesus says, invite the poor. Invite the poor. They don't care how much money you spend on the hors d'oeuvres. Invite the cripple, the lame, who will be so very grateful just to have a place to sit down. Jesus said, invite the blind. They will not be looking at the door to see who comes in. When people break bread together, Community is created, and you will be blessed, because these people cannot repay you. You will be blessed. Jesus is not giving an adequate lesson. Jesus is giving a glimpse of the kingdom of God. A heavenly banquet where God is the host and there is no end to the invitations. God invites, invites, and invites, and keeps on inviting. Not based on status. Ancestry, wealth, prestige, and power. God invites and invites and invites because of God's ever present, grace filled, unconditional love. That is just the way things are. This morning, you and I are invited 
to his Sabbath meal. The host has carefully chosen the guest list. Each of us is included. There are no walls to separate us. No doors to keep us out. Each of us has a printed invitation. You may be here because you are poor in spirit, totally exhausted from trying to keep it all together. You may be here because you are hungry, starving for just a little peace of mind. You may be here because you need to come empty-handed. You need to let go of all that baggage you've been holding on to. You may be here because you are just so very grateful to be included. Whatever the reason for you being here, you are most welcome at this table. You are most welcome. There is a special place of honor for you. You are welcome. When you and I break bread together, community is created. At this blessed table, when you and I eat the bread of heaven, we are filled with Christ's presence, Christ's peace, Christ's power and love. We are filled with it. When we break bread together, community is created. We become the community of St. Thomas Episcopal Church. It is a truth I want you to hold on to. When you and I break bread together, we become community. Although we walk out the doors and go our separate ways, we are still community, connected, bound together by the peace, power, and love of Jesus Christ. We go forth from this place as community. And together, as community, we can break down the walls that separate us. And we will be blessed. We will be blessed. That is just the way things are. Amen.